Guys, we're back in the garage. We got Tony. Tony, what's going on? We got your car. Great, awesome, fantastic. But why do we have all these boxes? Why do we? Why? why? Just honestly, when they showed up, I thought you were like, I don't know what it is. I was like, I thought I, I thought I ordered something. Like, God damn it! What did I order by accident? So. We've got all these boxes yeah, here, right? really light. We're like, what the heck? And they're all identical boxes. So we're like, what in the world? But we were expecting, so we're looking for a silicone coupler. We're waiting on that. That's supposed to be here today. It hasn't shown up, so God knows where that is. UPS came, so it's just say, fair to say they're not. it's not coming. Yeah, it's that FedEx comes early, UPS comes late, right. UPS already came. So that's not good. So we're already missing the coupler. So the only thing left was the spark plugs. We're like, dude, we, were, we got 12 spark plugs. Like, there's not spark plugs in these boxes. Well, look, guys. But look at this. That big ass box, guys. Two! Fucking two of them! So I'm assuming there's two in each one of these. Hey, you... Look at this, guys. Look at my neighbors over here. I don't appreciate that! <laughs> That's when you know you have good neighbors. America. Alright, so I'm about to change the oil. BB's right now putting in the ARP extended studs for Tony's car. Um, we're going to kind of go over that here a little bit more in detail. I'll show you guys when he does the back. It's actually quite easy, right? I mean, uh, there's not much to it. Ideally, I like to remove the rotor, but it's same concept. It's a flat surface, so you know it's going to be true. And this install tool is pretty nice to snap on. Um, there's a convention uh, in my bag there, Tony, on the one side pocket. You have like kind of like a washer ring. Now there should be another one. And then you have just like what it would rest on the rotor, and it's threaded. And there's this style, which has a bearing that rotates on, but then you use like a, I wouldn't use this lug nut, but it's aluminum. same idea, it'll draw the uh, stud through, but nice. the snap on one's a little bit more beefier and it's threaded, so you know. We'll show you guys here in a second when we do the back one so you guys can see it firsthand. Okay, now I need to empty the tank for Tony. Uh, his air fuel regulator, or air fuel, good lord guys, Fuel pressure regulator is right here. Ran the hose down, same one I used for my car, down inside of the tank here. Uh, I'm gonna do the same, I'm gonna go get my computer, actually kick the car on here, and uh, just use the battery. I've been having it on charge here, so it should be good. I'm actually gonna plug it back in here real quick, make sure it keeps charging. Let's go ahead and just skirt, do that, and uh, let's go get the ECU. Or I should say, go get the computer. All right, guys, just like we did on my car, we're over here looking at the fuel pump right now. We're gonna highlight this bottom row here. I'm gonna get this and highlight over. I'm trying to do this one hand right now, and I, apparently I can't. Come on. All right, guys, so there's the fuel pump. I'm gonna hit enter. And now, it should be dumping fuel from this fuel pump down inside there. You guys can see, there's the fuel coming out. We'll fill up as much as we can. It's running straight up battery power right now. I have it hooked up to the wall to help out a little bit. That is just a trickle charger, but I've been having this on a trickle. That little excess power battery should ju ju do just fine. We've got to fill up both containers to get all the old AE85 out. E85, as you can tell, I'm rushing, stuttering over myself. I apologize. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's what we gotta do. Right, BB? Yep. Right, Tony? Yeah, yep. Yes. Yes. All right, guys, so we're back here now. Like I said, I wanted to show you about doing the studs here. I should say I wanted BB to show it here. All right. Caliper's off, I was just telling Ryan and Tony. So this little hole here is an access hole to relieve the slack or adjust slack on your parking brake. And it's someone put it on kind of wrong. But I got two bolts here. This is going to help pull the rotor off so you're not beating, banging up on the rotor. So if we can here, we'll just. Yep, pulls right, right like off. That. Yep. And it should come right off. Now. Here's your access hole, and down here is your adjuster for your parking brake. Moving on to the dampener. A um, bunch of companies make a bolt grip set, a puller set. I have a Mako one. It comes with a variety of different length and different pitched from metric and standard, different adapters for whatever the situation may be. Unfortunately, with this dampener and its setup, these bolts weren't long enough, so Tony ran out, grabbed a few bolts, but I got it set up now. So how this works, there's bolts uh, threaded and pitched into the dampener to allow you for this purpose to get it off. Um, I've seen people use pry bars. You can do that, you just gotta watch where you pry at and don't want to break anything so 
with a couple turns, we'll walk the pool. Walks right off. Without marring any threads in the crank or damaging the crank end where the pulley is pressed on. And there you go, guys. Take your bolts out and that's done. it. All right, I'm gonna let BB guy go ahead and talk, guys. I know he's been talking a lot tonight here, but it just makes it easy because we're doing so much. Ryan could say the same thing, but it's easier. Uh, crank pulleys off. As you see, we used that tool. We took the tensioner off, wherever. Right there? The tensioner. Two 12 millimeter um, bolts. Yep, two 12s. Um, Toyota has a special service tool to retract this. Ryan has the pin. We're just gonna use the vise to get tension back on this. And then just let it sit. Don't mess with it till you're ready to put it in. Uh, so what are we gonna do next, Ryan? Uh, next, we, what we wanna do is go ahead and remove the cam bolts, which if you actually look here, on the factory cams and on, uh, on aftermarket cams, there's actually a spot where you can actually put a adjustable wrench. You hold that and then crank the bolt loose. Now, before you do this, before you take any of this off, I would hope that you guys had everything at Top dead center, you want to make sure that everything's at TDC. Um, as long as it's that way, you can start taking it apart. Once you get the cams off, you take the plate off, and then you slowly take the rest of the cam caps off, and then we'll show that stuff step by step. guys so you just saw we took out the cans we took out the buckets right now next up we have to remove the valves um, there's a couple way of doing this unfortunately we have it up in the air right now we can put it back down on the ground uh, but we have some other things we need to do so we either can one use a toilet tool or we can use this this little tool right here which before we get into this I want to thank night run garage for sending this up for to let me borrow and use um, Chris and those guys down there are freaking awesome. Night Run Garage has helped me a ton over the years. I went down and visited them a couple times. They're just, they're good guys, they're good people. I can't say enough good things about them. If you guys wanna check them out, they're down below, or you can check their website out right here. Uh, again, Night Run Garage, thank you again, guys. All right, guys, it's starting to get a little late here, so if we say or slur stuff, I apologize. Tony right now wanted to adjust his carbon fiber diffuser, and he wanted to put quick release latches on, which is a brilliant idea in case you need to get, like he had to, onto a flatbed. It makes it quite hard. As you can see here, he had one small issue when he had his and had a little bit of a blemish. And Tony was not too happy about that. So Tony, had this is his idea. This is brilliant. So people use these for actually holding on like bumpers and stuff. So it's literally an ingenious system. You hit a button. And literally, so this fastener releases from this stud. So people will manufacture this in the side of their core support, or, you know, and basically, they'll have it fastened in here, so then this is on your bumper, which is not very good looking. Sure. Admittedly, but I had the idea, I was like, hey, if I, because mine had just Allen bolts and nuts, which is- And it was, they were all different, yeah, it made yeah, it a pain. And rusting, and so with this, no it, tools are necessary. Just yeah, no tools necessary. They even have lockable ones of these if you're paranoid and you want them to be lockable. But so yeah, we had we need a total of six. And uh, so far we just drilled our first one. Unfortunately, the original owner didn't mount this actually straight. So we it's center. It wasn't center. center. It wasn't center. So we're having to drill more holes, and there's already plenty of holes in this thing. It's kind of it's carbon fiber. No one wants to drill holes in carbon, but it, it is what it is.
All right, guys, so it's just me here today in the garage, um, but we have a new Powerhouse Racing Billet Steel Tensioner. Well, it keeps the belt tensioned. Uh, and then we have the factory cast aluminum, or steel one. Now, if you guys can see here, there's a little bit more material on this one versus this one. Uh, and this is billet steel versus just cast steel. These tend to crack with idiots like us, tons of anti-lag, or just being hard in a car in general. These things tend to crack. Um, billet steel is obviously the tension on it's way more. There's way more to go with. Um, and actually, what I'm looking here, there's supposed to be a brass ring in there. I don't see one. But you see this brass bushing in here? It's to keep that metal bolt that goes inside it from binding up because this constantly is moving back and forth, back and forth. And with a ton of heat, these will tend to seize. So this keeps it from seizing and you keeps you from uh, bad things happening. We have to put on the actual wheel itself here. But I'm gonna put this on quick and then uh, we should be good. Okay guys, so the left one here is the factory spring. Over here is the Brian Crower aftermarket spring. This is much stiffer. Uh, if you actually, Corey can actually compress with his finger. See how much that compresses? Corey's giving the same force here, and by hand, you barely can move them, this factory one. This is why you wanna move these, so you don't wanna get valve float. Uh, we're using this 21, I forget what the name of the exact name of it is, but I just wanna say before I go any further with this, Night Run Garage sent me this up to use, and this is worth its weight in gold. If you guys do not have one of these, and you're doing with the head on, you need this tool. I am doing the rope trick. If you don't know what the rope trick, what you do is, put the cylinder as far down as you can, get some nylon rope, stuff a bunch of nylon rope down on the cylinder head, and then compress it up so you put your bolt back in, use a hand ratchet, crank it back up, and once the cylinder gets close to TDC, it's gonna get real tight because of all the rope inside of it, and then it holds your valve up. So the valve doesn't drop down the cylinder head. Neat little trick I learned a couple years ago. Uh, my friend, I shouldn't say I learned, someone told me about, so that's my way of learning. Um, pretty neat little trick, I've never done it. When I did this, the head was off. I was a little scared about doing it, but now after doing this, this isn't that bad at all. Good job, Corey. Good job, Chanel. I appreciate the emotional support you're giving over there. You're doing a great job. All right, so again, guys, my cousin Corey's helping right now. So I want to kind of go through this real easily. Before we get too far into it, I want to thank Night Run Garage for sending this to me to borrow. Um, you can use this to crank it down. Just don't do it too hard. So tighten this up, and I'm going to show you guys how this tool works. This is freaking awesome. Again, I can't thank Chris and those guys enough. Um, this just makes it so easy. So he's gonna grab this. You set this little piece here inside the head. This is actually designed for a Subaru engine. This is not meant for a 2JZ, believe it or not, but it happens to work perfectly. Now, what I wanna show you guys here, you have this little rod, right? This rod spins down and touches the top of this little hat. So you got your hat here. Spin this down by hand just to get it lined up. Now you've got a little window. That window there then allows you access to get to your um, what do you call it? Spring retainers. Good Lord, I'm having a brain fart. To your spring retainer. So we'll compress this down. Go ahead, Corey. It pops up. Keep going a little bit more. Stop right there. And then we take our magnet, which is somewhere around here. Take your magnet and grab your keepers. If I call them retainers, guys, I apologize. They're called keepers. You pull those off, and now make sure you put them somewhere you don't lose because they are very small and very vital to this. Then you just reverse this out. And you can pull the top off. Got one. And then pull the spring out. And then you just reverse the process for the new setup, and that's it. So you put your new Brian Crower spring in, put your titanium retainer in, and then we'll compress it down here. Now we've got the new titanium retainer and new Brian Crower spring. Now here's the tricky part, guys. This is getting the retainers in. This part is, for lack of better words, not the fun part. Yeah, it, it takes a little bit of time, guys, so please be patient. Um, we have magnetic, what well, comes with a little magnetic screwdriver, this tip of the screwdriver that comes in this kit. Um, I want to show you guys the company logo here. It's called Company 23. Um, they are not sponsoring this ad, by the way, guys. They are doing this. I'm just doing this because, yeah, thank you, Chris, and Night Run Garage. So if you guys want to do anything, support Night Run Garage for sending me this. But Corey's taking his patient time here to barely put those in there, and this is a really, really hard part. And I think he got both of them in really quickly, which is unusual. That's That doesn't happen like that. So. Nope, popped out, down. And see guys, that's kind of the problem. Like it looked like it'd be perfect, but it just wasn't quite there. And that's what you gotta keep playing with. You gotta try your best to be as careful as possible. And 
that's it guys, you pull this off, and that one is done. You've got a nice shiny titanium retainer and Brian Crower spinning there now, and now you just repeat that over and over and over. Yes, it is gonna take some time. Yes, it is tedious, but it is well worth it. Again, big shout out to Night Run Garage. I really appreciate this, guys. Uh, without this tool, you would have to use something like this, the Toyo tool from Valve Master, which does work, but takes a lot more of physical effort where this you can just use basic tools. And I feel like this is a lot more precise and you're not worried about keepers flying all over the place. Yeah,